five o'clock to start. Okay. Will it, are you ready? <laughs> okay. Um, we'll call the meeting to order for the Human Rights Commission on March 20th, uh, 2019. And Josh, can you do a roll call? Yes. Nate Alder. Present. Tony Avin. Deb White. Here. Shin Ramani. Kel Pauli Normandin. Here. Willard Yellowbird. Okay, well, we can't do the agenda yet. Do we want to just maybe wait a couple minutes or should we just have Cassie? Want to, want to go? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay. I, I'm guessing Condi will be here shortly, but let's, we can go ahead and if you want to give your. So um, this year, Welcoming Week is from September 13th to the 22nd. And Welcoming Week is actually part of a national movement called National Welcoming Week. Um, this will be our fifth year here in the Fargo-Moorhead area. And um, really the focus of Welcoming Week is to um, have a series of events, whether they're educational, um, social, um, economic focused, but really to bring in um, the community to kind of um, come together around immigrants, new Americans, um, old and new neighbors, and just kind of form some of those bonds in the community. So um, part of it is the idea that, um, you know, to welcome somebody is a one-time thing, but to be welcoming is um, ongoing. And so what can we do in our communities to, um, provide an atmosphere or start to bridge some of these um, cultures in the community so they feel welcome. And um, also the, the great thing about Welcoming Week too is that um, it not only is it social, there's really a focus on it being an economic, um, push towards economic um, features within the events too. So, you know, um, you can see on that list, there was events for um, starting new businesses, um, just more of an entrepreneurship focus also because you know the idea of is having a diverse community also helps the economy too so so yeah you know we want people to move into our neighborhoods and and um, from outside and encourage some of that and so we want to be known as having a welcoming commu a community so um, we've done everything from having 20 events in 10 days <laughs> uh, last year we had 13 events um, there was about 800 nationwide, so it's um, really great to know that this area has so many events just in our little little spot. So, yeah, um, I'm trying to see here. I brought some. So, you know, in the past we had some uh, other organizations and businesses such as um, the Job Service of North Dakota, the Fargo Public Library, Charism, the YWCA helped participate, Narrative 4, the Red River Market, Green Card Voices, Immigrant Development Center, um, the Consortium, and then of course we get a small amount of funds from the Fargo Human Rights Commission and then what we do is we um, we've done different things over the past. We've either distribute them, distributed them to people who were having some events. We sort of created this large budget. We had people submit and then they could have it be shared. Um, one year we tried to really focus it on advertising to see if that is a better way to use the funds. So, you know, we've really been flexible to see what we can do. Um, I think this year one of our focuses is our two really try to reach out to those diverse communities. You know, I think that in the past we've had a lot of people at the table that are, you know, business owners or um, directors of organizations. And, you know, I feel really passionate about, um, you know, who are the other voices that we need to have at the table? And so um, just, I know over the next couple months and the next few weeks, I'm gonna be making some personal phone calls myself and just finding out how 
I can get these diverse communities involved too. So, yeah. Did you guys just start your um, meetings like last week? Was yep, it? Okay. we had our first meeting. Um, we had a few people, had some new faces, had um, some representation from West Fargo for the oh, first really? time this year. So, you know, it's been mostly in Fargo. We've been trying to, I know you guys have been trying to figure out how to get Moorhead involved and um, had the city of West Fargo there uh, along with their cultural liaison officer to um, see what they can do. They've got that great new space now on Cheyenne with that new development. And so they're trying to see if they can have some kind of cultural focused event. They have a lot of really great cultural representation in their city too. And they're trying to figure out how to engage those populations and in those little communities. So um, it, they had a chance to get their wheels turning on some of that. Yeah, good to see you, to see you too. I know um, last year I went to a lot of the meetings and we kind of were trying to figure out what to do and we never really got very far other than hand out some flyers and stuff at Pride. And I, it's really helpful. Yeah, you know. I, and it kind of, it was nice. Um, so it was the first time we had a booth at Pride, so then having that handing out and just talking to people and kind of explaining what it was I thought was kind of interesting too. But um, I do plan on going to some meetings and so anybody else that wants to go, if you want to join, um, just to... And one, it's a good learning experience, <laughs> just because I had no Networking, idea. Yep. I had no idea that all this stuff goes on. Um, and then maybe figure out what we can do to help out um, yeah. forward a little bit. So. so two years ago, we decided to use part of the money on um, advertising. We decided that that probably wasn't our best use of it afterwards. You know, we're still in learning mode to figure out what is the right way to um, reach different communities and get people involved. We figured out that the best way is word of mouth and a personal invite. And so that's where we looked at all these summer events. I know Moorhead had some great, um, greater days of Moorhead. There was um, the uh, little, what's the thing you do down at the park, not too far from here, once a month? Oh, oh, oh. Um, during the summer? Yes. River. river. Well, there's that. There's, there's, well, there's streets alive, and there's the river. Yes, river. No, not river. No, it's, I uh, can't think of I it. Know it I don't know. We had a booth there, yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And we were handing out some different things in town, and we figured out that that's just the best way to get involved. I know in one of our last meetings, we talked about Bridge Bash. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, if there's even some way that we can get some cultural performances down there at Bridge Bash and because um, I think that's sort of a welcoming event for um, college students right. but you know if that's something too that we could kind of roll into so I think it happens around the same time. Cassie that was one of my questions are you working with any of the with K-12 and also with the um, colleges and universities? So last year we had new um, superintendents for all three schools so we did reach out to them we got all of the marketing and the dates in their hands just because we wanted them to know put it on their map and then maybe even put it in their school newsletters and things like that but um you know still learning how to get the schools involved you know when what that looks like you know Absolutely. Any So the thing about Welcoming Week, of course, is anybody can have a Welcoming Week event. You know, if you want to have a potluck in your backyard and call it a Welcoming Week event and invite your neighbors, absolutely you can do that. Um, this kind of committee is just a group of people that have come together. And then, of course, we have the, the, we have the advantage of having those shared funds that we can do stuff with. Um, but, you know, of course, we want to welcome everybody to be a part of it. But we also want people to know that they can get on the national website. They can, you know, put in their own event, and you know, we hope that people will just find it a good cause and want to get involved. So, yeah. Did you guys have a good turnout last year? We did. Um, there was some events that um, we l learned a lot from. One of the events was a. Um, the Small Business Association does it every year, and it's focused for uh, new Americans who want to start a business. And the year before, they had it at the Immigrant Development Center there. And of course, it was packed. You know, it was just a perfect place. This year, they moved, last year, they moved it. I think they had it at LSS. And they did notice that they had smaller numbers. And so, you know, that goes back to that learning of figuring out, you know, how do we, um, 
you know, create these events. So I, I think um, to take away bar barriers is a big thing. You know, if people can't drive or don't have transportation, you know, do the events need to come to those neighborhoods so there's more inclusivity? Um, instead of you know putting it somewhere that works great for us because right. we're familiar but then you know here we have a population who isn't aware of the, that building and although they did know of course where LSS is I think it just worked better at the Immigrant Development Center because some of those entrepreneurs are already there and they have family members and things like that but um, the kickoff event is community table and that happens at the Plains Art Museum and that brings in anywhere between three to 400 people. Um, our biggest concern with that is having enough food <laughs> and um, trying to get everybody through the line eff efficiently, if that's... Uh... <laughs> um, the first year we did the kickoff, we did it at Rabanis Park in Fargo, and there was over 600 people. Wow. And again, that was something that we decided, that's too big, we need to scale it down, and so... Um, but you know it's great to know that that many people in the community want to be involved right. so that's where I think that um, the other thing that we've learned is not to try to schedule events on the same nights to be really respectful of other people's events and then to also see if okay so we want to have this event is there a way that we can double up with someone else so you know if I'm holding a kid event is there a way that we could do like a parents or an adult entrepreneur one and then hold the kid one at the same time so then that way you know that also when you talk about those barriers if there's somebody who wants to be involved in that event but here they have kids well then maybe they could piggyback you know, so really trying to think about that when we organize this schedule. Um, the YMCA was involved for the first time this last year, and it was great. They opened up their climbing wall for free for anybody who just wanted to, anyone who just came in and mentioned Welcoming Week. And it was really fun to see a lot of the new American kids and um, up there for the first time, you know, climbing those Fine. walls. And then they also opened up the pool for a swimming night for free. And because they too are really trying to figure out how to how do they reach these families who um, you know maybe can't you know afford some of these fancy um, clubs you know in town and things like that. So uh, having another affordable alternative. So some of the new Americans uh, are going to start a, a small business here in Mohead. So what, they, what they're trying to find is they're trying to find out somewhere they can get loans. They want to have a restaurant that, where they can cook uh, traditional foods. Okay. But what this a small business association can have, what kind of help they can get? So I don't know. I know a little about the Small Business Association, but I do think that there are like some different, they can connect them with other, through SCORE, these mentors in the community who maybe already have businesses and so um, give them some advice. And then I think there are some small micro loans available through the Small Business Association that people can qualify for mm. to kind of help them get off their feet. But that's where, um, I know Moorhead has a separate Small Business Association than Fargo mm -hmm. or than North Dakota and Minnesota, they're, they're separate. But um, yeah, I, I know that's when they did that training, that was what a lot of that information was, so. Yep. Yeah, it can provide some resources. Yep. Mm -hmm. At Concordia? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Through the Office of Business. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So they, what, what do they do? Uh, I'm not that as familiar with I'm not as familiar with it, but they mm. will do some of that of meeting with, I think that they will do some trainings or meet with folks who want to start, want to start small businesses. Yep. And and help them direct them towards the right kind of funding and mm. then just give them advice on um, you know getting their business off the ground which is sometimes really helpful yep i think each business has their own little pains of <laughs> yeah yeah they're usually pretty helpful so they could reach out to them so yeah does anyone have any questions well, I guess my question was, 
you answered a little of this, and so I was just wondering, since I'm a new member of the committee, of what we've done in the past and what ideas you had for how we, you know, what um, what we could do for the upcoming year. So you went to the meetings. But we I went to the meetings. Okay. Your mic's not on, so it keeps okay. flashing, and it's, I can see it. Um, so I went. We went to the meetings, and. Um, oh, I thought. There were different like requirements, I think, in order for us to do anything. Um, it had to be a certain way. So, I, and we were trying to get combine yeah. efforts with um, another group. She had sent me an email, and I'm like, okay, well, we can do this. And then it never, I don't know, never responded back. And so we were trying to because we're, we don't really have funds. I understand um, to to donate. It was more like we were trying to get involved. Like maybe we could help. Um, host an event or or work with the city to get something put together or just mm -hmm. anything and we did hand out flyers a couple of times and just I just basically I just went to the meetings and mm -hmm. said hey why don't you do this I don't really it was just really informative but and then we had a staff change so then everything kind of went mm -hmm. downhill from there but um, I guess I would I would like to put a little more effort into it now that I've actually been to some of these meetings and kind of yeah. understand what we're doing um, just figure out maybe we can just work in combination with another group that mm -hmm. needs help or whether that's just us going in and volunteering or anything is helpful. I mean, yeah. you yeah. guys can use, I mean, they've got stuff going all the time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if nothing else, it's just us being there and even if we personally volunteer to come and hand out things or whatever, yeah. that's, I mean, anything is better than nothing. So. Yeah. Yeah, and we participated at the Red River Market this year, and so I don't, I don't know if uh, you know that would be something that would fit in with any of your farmers markets that you do here on the Moorhead side. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe there's something fun that you could add to that. Right. You know, I, it's really an open, you know, the be as creative as you want to be, and then absolutely we would love any type of assistance at any of the events i know people are always looking for volunteers or yes. um, if we're handing out things so yeah. so i guess we also tried to talk about maybe finding a location in moorhead to to have one of the maybe we wouldn't be hosting it mm -hmm. but maybe just talking with the city or somebody in the to see if we could have it at a park you know just to kind of incorporate Moorhead into the, Absolutely. the events more yeah um, would be nice because I don't know if you guys had anything I think co the college did maybe was yeah, the narrative over there, there was narrative for okay. that was yeah. at Concordia yeah right. yeah but it's been about it oh green card voices I think spoke at one of the universities too they came in and okay. did a forum uh, and actually uh, Hakun did a um, he had a a panel at Blue Stem last year. Mm -hmm. and That's right. He brought in some different um, people who Somali are wanting American. to get into leadership within the government. We had Somali American elected officials come up from the Twin Cities, actually, yep. too, and then they met with elected officials in the in our area. Yeah, mm -hmm. elected and appointed oh. officials. Mm -hmm. You guys were on the map. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and if, if you could get me information on when the meetings, the planning meetings are held, okay. I can certainly get that out to the group. Mm -hmm. So far, we have them every second Wednesday at of noon. the month at <laughs> noon, yep, at the Fargo Public Library in that main. Um, but definitely, I'll, I can add you to the list that goes out. So, yeah. And of course, too, if you guys have any ideas on how we can engage um, the diverse communities on the Moorhead side and get mm -hmm. them involved and really just help them feel included in the community. Um, I think that's the special part of all of it. So great. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me anytime. Thanks, Casey. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, good to see you. Good see to see you all. Good to see you too. Now we have quorum, so we can go ahead and approve the agenda and minutes for the, um, let's approve the agenda for the Human Rights Commission, uh, March 20th. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion is carried to approve the agenda 
for March 20th, and how about for the minutes? Does anybody have any changes? I move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the minutes are approved from the February 20th meeting. I don't see any citizens to be heard. Um, 2019 annual plan. Do you have something? Um, I just brought the results of the survey, survey that was sent results. out. Okay. We had three responses and I've compiled those in the packet. <laughs> The one, can I just ask a question? The one I was confused about. So on the survey, when we had the first question about the, let's see. Yeah, the first and the second. So the first one then, when I first filled it out, um, I selected more than three, but then it, it would actually only allow you to pick three, which then the second question was now pick three. So they seem to be the same. I had that same thing. Same okay. thing, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. So, so I had to change my response to the first one because of that. So I, I don't know if that was I. Re I didn't know if I was reading it wrong. Or? No, I did okay. that same thing. Okay. Because then when I hit submit, it said you can't do you can't do more than three. I'm like, what? Well, it doesn't say that. Right. So, so I think that's why the answers for one and two ended up being pretty much identical. <laughs> yeah. And what were we going to do with the survey? Were we going to kind of um, work it into our plan? Or what was? From what I recall, um, the survey was wanted just to generally check on the priorities that people have. OK. And this was just the commissioners who mm -hmm. got the survey? OK. Yep. Have, yeah, I guess we have stuff worked in for Fair Housing and um, Human Rights Day already, so that's good. What do we have for Fair Housing? Um, well, we don't. We just have it on our on our um, plan. Mm -hmm. We haven't. I think that's the next thing on our agenda to mm -hmm. discuss. Actually, no, that's an update from the oh, the okay. letter and things from last oh, month. Oh, okay. So just that's fine. a separate item. Okay. When is Fair Housing Month again? Is that April. April? Okay. So I, uh, if we're discussing the, the plan, I had one thing I wanted to bring up. For our plan for the upcoming year, right? Is that would that would be under this this agenda item, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Have we um, for education and awareness? Uh, have we ever done a bystander intervention training? Well, so bystander intervention training would it, it, focusing on people to prepare to intervene. So, say for okay. instance, you see a hate incident occurring. And um, and I, I there's folks in our community that have done really uh, you know do really effective trainings, but I think the the reason I I thought about it uh, looking at some of the the results and, and things that we've proposed, but I think that um, it it wouldn't be a bad thing to consider because you know often I'll just go back to I I put in here a comment uh, when I put in my survey results about. Um, about preparing people in the community, even if you aren't part of a group, even if you're part of a majority group, uh, everybody should be prepared. If they see, for instance, incidents of hate occurring, that it's our responsibility if we want this to be a welcoming and inclusive community, even if it's not, I'm not experiencing it, to be there and to be an ally for those who are. are. And, um, and there's you know, different reasons why people don't step up. And some of it has to do with people are really unprepared, mentally unprepared. And so a bystander intervention training, some aspects of that can be things of just helping 
helping people think through that. Like if, and I, and I think about some of the incidents that we've had happen in our community. So for instance, there was a, you know, an, an, um, a pretty horrifying experience of is, Islamophobia, um, you know, uh, that happened in Hornbachers that, you know, a young, a, a woman was, um, accosted by a man and nobody except for one of the employees intervened and so this was several people witnessed this woman being harassed and did not step forward and so in things like that you think about why is it that you know that people don't intervene and um there there could be many different reasons but some of the you know some of the research even just shows if you work with people ahead of time so you, you can think about that like let's imagine that you see something like hap that happens what might be some tools that you could have so that you can be a good ally that you could step up and help help that person out that you could um, you know help to diffuse the situation and so bystander train intervention training is often about that of how do you get the word out and and sometimes particularly um, in the upper Midwest where people are very uh, people who grew up here um, I can say this as somebody who moved to this area that people here who grew up here are tend to tend to have a really difficult time with conflict and they freeze up and they don't know what to do and sometimes having those tools can be really helpful and or so they jump in and make it worse yeah I mean yeah, yeah you know so it, it's one thing that occurred to me of how do we what kind of things could we do to help people um, be better prepared and to again create help them to to take a responsible role of helping to create the the kind of community that we want to have and I think you know it empowers them so that if that happens they might be more comfortable intervening but it also sends a message that we all are part of this that you know whether whether or not you are directly experiencing that you know being there and supporting our friends and neighbors is really important you know in, in being ready to do that so and I, I think that's a great idea what kind of I mean so if we did something like training would that be something that we would like host a training event or would they come here and speak or what yeah what we are you yeah. what are you or do we just have them come here and speak and kind of tell people what's available I yeah um, I think the and that's why I wasn't as I said I'm sort of new to this so I was looking at some of the things that you that they've that, that were listed in terms of possibilities um, and maybe we could do something like it, it may um, of hosting that and having it available for people in Moorhead if they wanted to come through a training and as I said there are there are people uh, I know uh, Amina Chowdhury uh, who is at Concordia is one who's done it um, uh, one of the people who was a trainer for it recently was just leaving the community but there's there's different people that in our community who will do those types of training so we should I think that'd be nice to find more information kind of decide if hosting it's an option or just having them come here and speak mm -hmm. I, I think that's a great idea mm -hmm. With it, but. Oh, we can add it under uh, education awareness. We can add bystander intervention training, and um, if uh, yeah, if you've got some resources that you could share to uh, just kind of collect some info on that, that'd be uh, sure. yeah something we can easily include. And then my my other question was: if April is the uh, fair housing month. This is March, right? So, do we need to do something to it, like a proclamation again this year? Had you done that last year? We did. No. Um, I had laryngitis, so I stood there, <laughs> <laughs> tried to talk, but it didn't go well. Um, at a city council meeting. At the city council meeting. So, yeah. So they read the proclamation and and. Um, we accepted it, I guess. Is that what you I, I don't. I don't. I don't think I was there. So no, I, I was there. Alone. Squeaking out. Yeah. It was <laughs> awesome. Um, and then we did that. We partnered with Softo. Yeah, and you uh, recorded that yeah, training. Yeah, and I don't know if that's something that we can do, or I don't know if they do that every year. I don't know how you even get in touch with them. And also these. Uh, for the new Americans, we they try to have a daycare here in Mohead, 
and looking at space which can be a daycare is kind of struggling. They found couple spaces, but I help them whenever we found a space and we try to contact the who is the owner of that space. In Mohe, it looks like only one person is, is the owner of that place. We South Mohe, North Mohe, so uh, this guy, is a, is, he's a, he never say anything bad to me, and whenever I met him, he just explained to me uh, how much the rent and all that stuff, just like the other people. But people m complain against him like he's kind of uh, discriminating about getting the uh, renting for the spaces. Then a friend of us who was volunteering with us, a white guy who went to him and he finally straight said that he don't want to rent black people that spaces. But he never said to me, whenever I got some Somali moms, we met with him and it's like just giving us the details and whatever, whatever we're supposed to do. Uh, but th to this guy, he just said he don't want to rent any black people for that area. Really? I know I have his name and, and I, like I said, he, I, he never said anything bad to me. He just welcomed to me any time. I call every day and he's, to me he's a friend, but this is what happened. Connie, have you um, seen some of the resources that, so this is obviously, this came up not too long ago. There, at the state level and the federal level, there are, um, you know, there are places where you can. Um, file a complaint. Yeah, file a complaint. And that also, um, there's other resources in our area that, so Northwest Legal Services is a, a group that can help in terms of some of the you know, uh, looking into things like that. Mm -hmm. But Josh has some of that information. Yep, and and on on the Human Rights Commission's uh, webpage, there is uh, a link to some of those resources and to file complaints mm -hmm. of discrimination. Yep. So those should absolutely, you know, situations like that should be reported, and people should be um, guided to those resources to be able to mm -hmm. do that. I'd say. I mean, I was asking myself why he always give us a lot of checkpoints. He never say no to me. But he's giving me more details, do this, do this, do this. Maybe that's why. But this guy, whenever he show up and he tried to talk to him, he just straightly said to that words. And he, he's, he was shocking, too. He came back to me and he said, hey, the guy said this. Um, yeah, that happened. Mm -hmm. I suppose he was smart enough to know he'd get in trouble if he told you directly. Mm -hmm. Well, that's my view, yeah. Mm -hmm. But he might get in trouble anyway. But and, but but to me he 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 owned more, a lot of buildings here in Mohe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really? Okay. We we I mean, I mean it's kind of funny, but most of the New Americans call him. He's the owner of Mohe. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's, because we any space we check, we call. He's, he's the one. Hey, hello. This is. Okay. So. Yeah, I think we... Well, stuff like that should absolutely be reported. Mm -hmm. I don't think anything would, would change without somebody mm -hmm. raising a hand and bringing that issue up. Yeah. So you two can connect about that? that mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I could yeah. send you that link. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On a related but more positive note, if folks are looking for resources for starting um, daycare facilities, there's actually West Central Initiative um, can point you in the direction for some different resources. And even, uh, I was just at a training and I can look it up later, but there's a, an agency that will um, help with loans and some of the other research for opening up childcare facilities. Yep. Yeah, so I can... Um, if if you can send me, that would be okay, yeah. too. Yeah, I'd be happy to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that's one of the things, I know, at this, you know, even um, that we're looking at regionally and at the state level is just the, you know, the shortage of good child care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In Mohead especially, there's no, uh, like, that child care, and there's a lot of uh, Somali or New American moms who stay home, and mm -hmm. they don't work just because of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'd be happy to share with you some information that I learned recently. Well, I would think a proclamation by the city council would certainly be in order. Right. Um, I don't think it would be all that difficult to get that on the agenda. Right. 
we maybe already have a have a format. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I believe yeah. that I believe that would take place. Just, okay, just change dates and right. Mm-hmm. Do it. I will find what we did last year, uh, update something for this year, and then um, find out about getting on the council meeting. And then reach out to see, or does somebody want to volunteer to, assuming we can get it on there, someone want to volunteer to present that? What's the date? I'm not sure. The 25th is the next one. Um, Might be good eighth, to get it on this seventh agenda. Or eighth. Yeah, no. <laughs> and one, well, April was Fair Housing Month, right? Right. So, yeah, I, is it 8th? Is it 7th or 8th? I think it would be. You want to check and see? Yeah. Oh. I can look it up right now. Monday usually, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, it would be the 8th. I'll have to check my calendar. I think that's open, but... Mm -hmm. And the diversity job fair is coming now? On yes, 26th. that's next Tuesday. Right? Are those still here at the Morehead Center Mall? Yep. And they have, I think, 29 different businesses. They have a much larger number than they yeah. did last year. Yeah. I think 50 something now. Oh, is it now? Fantastic. Yeah, that's great. I think it was like nine last year. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the name was New American Joffe, and we, we thought we just label a name. There's a lot of people can come if we call diversity Joffe. That's great. Yeah. Anything else on the annual plan that we need to discuss? I had one other item. Okay. I just noticed for August that we did, so you mentioned too, we did the booth at Pride, and so Pride in the Park. Have we ever participated in the parade? And I thought that might be a neat thing to get the council to be part of the parade. So if we could have um, either the march, march in it or get a float in March and. I think, I don't think we, we did not. Mm -hmm. Last year, anyway, we just had a booth, and it was like seventy-five dollars. Mm -hmm. So that was, and that was really yeah. nice. And some council members came and were with us, so that was really nice. Uh -huh. um, and I don't have a problem, you know, walking the parade. I don't think it costs Before? anything. Yeah. We just get a banner. I don't know if we have to have a float, but we can definitely look at that. Mm -hmm. Didn't they? And then, didn't they have a banner last year uh, for the table? We have a, yeah, there was a big kind of a. Oh, so, okay, so one of those stands. Uh, yeah, stand oh, sure. Things, and I think I gave it back to Lisa. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure we've so got we it have upstairs. That. And then um, somebody put together some neat little um, flyers that had rainbow on it that we handed out. Great. And then we also handed out these for welcoming week. Actually, um, we had somebody from the welcoming week committee with us at the, at the tent. He came and volunteered later, helped me set up, and so that was kind of nice. Great. And then we just provided, um, we had water. We brought water, and uh, I had a bunch of tattoos, and we put tattoos on people, and then they made them, they stopped and visited, and yeah, Tia looked all over the place for um, those popsicles, those ices, but <laughs> everybody in town evidently had that same idea. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think that was, I mean, it was nice to be out there. and. Yeah recognized and but I, I think that'd be fun to walk in the parade yeah and I'd be Families. happy to encourage the city council members and the mayor to come and do it too yeah, yeah. could make it a collaborative mm -hmm. event. when do we have to have the plan finalized do you remember long before now so <laughs> okay Whenever you're ready to have it, you know, for 2020, um, you know, make sure to get it on the agenda, you know, in October, November, um, so that before the end of the year, we have it for the, the following year. So not this, we don't do this one. That's why I get confused. So this one says 2019 on it, annual work plan. Do we have to present this to the, to the city? We should check on that. Or is that what we presented the other day? No, that was the annual that was again report. report. Okay, so we need to figure that out. I'll look at my notes.
comes from last year too. I I believe it does. I can find out the date, okay. but it's we're we're well beyond it okay. from what I recall. Right. Right. And I'm not sure if anything was submitted last year. No. So we'll we'll be on top of it for 2020, awesome. and so whenever this is done, we can submit it to her. Okay. But I'll find out the dates, and I'll be able to bring that back. Perfect. Uh, the one thing I would add, you know, in the on page 11 of the packet where uh, it has the regular business. We had talked earlier in the year, uh, one of you had brought up um, having a list of guest speakers. Uh, and I think that's a big part of kind of the education of uh, having someone come in regularly to just provide some good information to the community. And so if you've got, uh, if any of you have um, speakers that you'd like to see come in here, uh, if you could send me lists of names or contact numbers, you know, I can certainly compile a, a kind of a list that we can work through. Um, and you know we could certainly look to at the the different themes of the month and try and fit them in with those. That'd be great. But uh, but it would be helpful any contacts you have or ideas. And I can incorporate those in and bring it back next month. The next item on the agenda is the um, affirmatively furthering fair housing update. Yes, and I can provide an update here for you. Okay. Um, so uh, last month there were three motions made. Um, a motion was made uh, to request city council direct city staff to draft a letter to the landlord in the alleged housing discrimination uh, situation. Um, there was a motion made to recommend city council and city staff review city landlord training curriculum uh, to make sure it includes training and resources regarding fair housing. Uh, and then there was a motion made to approve the distribution of that HRC statement regarding housing discrimination. Uh, so there was a letter that was sent to the landlord uh, and I'll apologize it was done a little differently than, than the motions had. Uh, been worded when this was taken back. Uh, it was just decided that this fell into the purview of the HRC uh, and this was educational components. We could just go ahead and do those. <clears throat> um, you'll see the letter that was sent is in the packet. Uh, and then the uh, landlord did actually send a response, sent a letter in here as well that kind of told his side of the story, uh, a little bit different than the story that, um, that we got in the media. So that's in there for you to, to kind of see how that uh, shook out. Um, as far as the landlord training goes, I also included an email in here uh, from the city staff that provides that landlord training. Uh, and as you can see, uh, they do hit on those topics of housing discrimination quite a bit. A lot of resources are provided. Uh, they have an attorney come in uh, that talks about it as well. Um, and they, they also commented that uh, they'll likely use that story that was in the news as an example uh, as part of the training in the future. Um, and as far as the uh, statement that was created on housing discrimination, uh, that was sent out as an e-notification as a press release on March 4th. Um, so all the actions that were listed in the motions were t have taken place. Um, every th bit of those is wrapped up. Uh, are there any additional uh, follow-up bits that are needed? Mm -hmm. I'll just say, um, I well, two things. One, I think we... We also talked about the website, and I think you already mentioned oh, that there are links that sorry. are already on the website, and yes, so that's already taken care of too. And so yes, you're right. I did mean to mention that, that yes, we do have links on there for education and to, to link to um, filing an actual complaint. And I just wanted to thank Josh for working on this and for um, you know taking care of contacting the different parties involved and it's nice to see that we already do have this as a part of our training and a good reminder and, it, and even if they can use some information from this example to help them with that training that's beneficial so thanks you're welcome thank you mm -hmm. and i have a question would it be um would having like leanne the, the individual or somebody that responded to this email would that be somebody who could maybe come in and speak to our group Oh, I would, I would guess so. I could certainly I mean, extend an invitation kind of just to kind of talk about the landlord about training it. and yeah. the process. Yeah. That's a good idea. 
And I don't know if maybe since April is fair housing, maybe we could do it then. Mm. Just And I'll give a, an update at the next council meeting and let them know that there's no action that the council needs to take and let them know the different, because we talked about some of it, but I'll also let them know that you looked at the trainings and everything to make sure that these are included and include the information on the web. The information is already included on the web page too. Mm -hmm. well, we got that taken care of right away. Good follow up. Anybody have any new business? Want announcements? Well, how about we mix them together? Okay. <laughs> it's the same thing. I sure can provide awesome. announcements. Last time I found out I wasn't quite following and I wasn't filling Sarah Watson Curry's shoes and so I came well prepared this did time. Did you talk to her and say, what do you I mean? did, I know. <laughs> yes. So, and Candy mentioned that uh, the, the diversity job fair, so that, that was one of the things I wanted to mention. A um, couple of other things that are coming up if people are interested. There's this, the, um, tomorrow, uh, I think there's a couple of different iterations of this, but there's a poverty simulation that will be at Concordia College, and I think we sent out information for one another time when that, that's yeah. happening. Uh, yeah. Is that in May, I think there was one that's yeah. happening? Was that United Way? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. United Way. Yep. Yeah, and at the same time, so it's in classic Fargo-Moorhead fashion, everything happens on the same day. But actually, so the poverty simulation at Concordia is tomorrow, three to six, but at 5.30 at Trinity um, FM Global Seminars, so Chira, one of the local organizations, is hosting a, a Naraz celebration. Um, so they're asking, inviting people to join and support the Kurdish community, and it's 5.30 to 8.30. It's going to be a fun event for the, for, uh, to celebrate Naraz and um, there'll be food and music and things like that, so people are encouraged to attend. Is that? Yes. Is that, is that? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Individual, okay. Oh. Is that at Trinity Lutheran? Yes, it is. So Trinity Lutheran on 8th Street in Moorhead, and again, 5.30 to 8.30 tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I wanted to mention, because it hasn't come up, is April 9th to 10th is when the Building Bridges Conference is happening. And so I don't know if any of you have ever participated in that, but it's hosted by um, Lutheran Social Services. And I've, I've participated in the past. It's a two-day conference um, for service providers, educators, and community leaders who work with new Americans. Um, it's a really beneficial conference. I don't, I, I, when, I know there's been opportunities in the past for um, organizations to table at that, so I don't know. That's what I wonder, Yeah, because I think we had talked about it last year, but um, mm -hmm. I don't think we ended up doing it. I think that would be something that would worth be definitely worthwhile. It's April 9th and 10th. Okay. And it's I, at the Holiday Inn in Fargo. Okay. I think the problem was nobody could, it's during the day, right? I, Yes. Yeah, I think that was, we couldn't get anybody to, who was available ah. <laughs> to go. If it's for tabling, I, I know that the Tuesday wouldn't work for me, but I could represent the organization, represent the commission on Wednesday, um, if that was a possibility. But, yeah. but, I, but I think if other people were interested. So, what do we have, is there, do we have to like sign up to have? There is a registration up? fee for if you're attending for the, you can do a one day registration or a two day registration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and I believe there's, you know, there's minimal funding that the HRC has and I believe right. that covers, yep. that will cover some of that okay. I'm guessing. So yeah, if we can, if we can see if we can. What, if and it is a, a great, a good opportunity to collaborate with other, um, organization and leaders in the community it's what time to what time uh i i can't remember it's it's all full days both days i think it starts at 8 a.m on the 9th but i'm not positive and goes to like 5 30. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and i don't know if they end earlier on the 10th so it's that tuesday and thursday the, the 9th and 10th i know when we were doing um we had a table i think at pangea not this year but the year mm -hmm. before and um, we, we had set up there's some kind of website where you can do scheduling so you can pick a shift time so it's not all on one person so maybe mm. something like that and we did that with the pride um, with the booth too we that would set be up. really nice yeah. I don't know what it's called yeah. 
But it would be great to have a presence there. Right. I'll have to see what that website is because you can send out the link to everybody and you can just go in and sign up for a, time, a shift. Oh, and then everybody like can there, see what people like event right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what or, it's like an yeah. event organizer thing, mm -hmm. so everybody can see what shifts yeah. are available and who can do what. Probably event right. Yeah. yeah. I know we've used that. Yeah. yeah. And then a couple of other things on April thirteenth, um, there's a transgender cultural competency training here at the library, so it's from ten to twelve. And it's hosted by Community Uplift Program and Harbor Health. And there is a pre-registration. There's a $25 fee for that. Um, but also looks like a very worthwhile event. And then on um, April 18th at the Moorhead Library, they're screening um, Home, which is a film that's the, about the homeless crisis in North Dakota. So, but still, I think, relevant to our area. So it's at the Moorhead Library. And there'll be a panel afterwards looking at housing housing issues and homelessness, and it's at 6.30. Mm -hmm. Good information. Thanks. More than made up for last. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Let Sarah know, right? <laughs> no, mm -hmm. yeah. I think that probably covers everything. Do you want to adjourn? I was just wondering, are we still one member short? Yeah, I'll provide an update on that, actually. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if there's question. any action in that. There is. There are, on the 25th, so next Monday, City Council meeting, the City Council will be, I believe, voting to appoint a new member. Uh, it's, I believe it's on the agenda. So hopefully uh, next meeting we'll have a seventh individual. Do you remember which ward? It's a ward one, not that large, right? I don't recall, okay. to be honest. Sorry. It's not mine. I don't remember what. I know it's not ward three. <laughs> um, and then also Josh did present our annual report at the, I tried, but <laughs> it was a long meeting. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to die. I was so hungry. So he did a great job from what I understand. Thank so you. that was good. So we got that done. Um, other than that, anything else? I just wanted to report on one thing uh positive thing that happened recently, uh, I think it was last week, one day, one of our staff is uh, sort of uh, well-trained or whatever in the Americans with Disabilities Act and building codes and uh, accessibility type issues. And so part of his job, not only uh, working with Josh on the RAMP program, but trying to provide some community education on what is accessibility and what should you be doing and he had a, a little workshop about 20 people or so 2022 uh, was quite real, well received and uh, so that's the sort of thing we want to try and get the word out uh, so that businesses don't have problems with complaints or lose customers or, or you know a lot of negative things that can happen if you don't just comply with some basic accessibility issues so right. Uh, Freedom Resource Center is there for the community as a resource. We should have somebody from Freedom, Freedom Resource come yes. and speak to us. Well, I was going to re recommend to Josh, yes. um, you know, I don't know if you want to wait till July, but that's uh, when the ADA was signed, is, so it's sort of a disability month, I guess, in a way. That'd be great. So maybe have Jerry yeah, we, come in? Yeah, sure. I just think people just don't have no idea. Well, e either that or they sort of ignore it and hope that it never comes up. Right. <laughs> That's not a thing. <laughs> that can't be. Yeah. That can't happen. And it, and it doesn't come up unless somebody makes an issue out right. of it. Right. But the people who don't know that it is an issue, I mean, because if I knew it was an issue, I, I'd be the first one going, uh, mm -mm, you can't do that. So it's some stuff I just don't, just don't. Mm -hmm. aren't aware of so I think it's good to have somebody come in and make us aware of things yeah so that'd be great there we have two more suggestions for you <laughs> speakers actually I do have one other thing I just thought of so Kenny were you uh, did you um I think you were one of the people who helped organize an, uh, an event uh, of support this weekend. For the job fair? 
No, so I thought I saw your name on this. So, um, oh, so in recognition. Hmm? Yes, yes. So I didn't know if you wanted to say anything about it, but I wanted to, I saw your name and I just wanted to thank you for helping to organize that. And I, um, I, I was, unfortunately, I was already booked and I couldn't go to it, but I just think, um, you know, anything that we can do in things like that just to show support for our friends and neighbors and, um, you know, when um, it was in response to um, to the um, shooting, so, mm hmm yeah, so in New Zealand. So we, we create that event, and there's a lot of people who show up, I mean, show their Muslim neighbors love and solidarity. Yeah. And it was kind of amazing. A lot of people came there and shared with us the emotion and everything. Uh, Ome also was there. Sarah was there. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's actually what I was when I was thinking about the bystander because I think there, for a lot of people it's that you know. Uh, uh, well, first of all, uh, again, not knowing what to do, but and and not taking the time to like uh, um, to you know to like something like this is a reminder of how we want to be there for our neighbors that we're so fortunate to have uh, a, di a growing diversity within our community and um, to you know to take the the opportunity to recognize that and see how our lives are better and uh, because of that and do what we can to support that, you know? Mm -hmm. the, I feel like more is, is actually, it, this is more, and, and people are more kind of showing everyone, like welcoming here and uh, standing with everyone around us. And, and I, I wonder, I just create that event and I talk to my friends and I put on Facebook, but how people show up and they came and they talk about that event. Can you turn on your microphone? Sorry, Sorry it's flashing up there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah makes me uh, to laugh more here in Mohead and also uh, there was uh, there was a lot. I, I, I was just expecting maybe 10 people will show up, but I feel like a lot of very important people came and sharing with us that uh, uh, hard moment. And yeah, uh, as like everyone said, terrorist has no religion and mm -hmm. it's kind of evil act. Mm -hmm. And w I mean, the, like Muslim community, like I myself, where I come from, I, I, I am Muslim since I was five years old. I was reading Quran and practicing Muslim, praying. Uh, my father was Muslim, my great, great father, my I, I, my background is all Muslim, but I am one of the worst victims from terrorists. I, I, my friends have been killed by terrorists, and so they have no religion. It doesn't matter if the person come from Christian community, Muslim community, white plug. It doesn't matter. It's just evil act. Mm -hmm. So, actually, it's great the way people stand up and against that, and we always try to make people there that we cannot divide for this issue. A Muslim person can do this, a Christian person can do it. It doesn't matter. It's, it's just hate. Mm -hmm. So what, whatever happened, I like these people and the way they stand up is kind of, we should say thank you. Well, thank you. Anything else? Is that it? Somebody want a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Meeting is adjourned. Thanks.